Coming together at different times in different places, in different spaces. We know that we are held as one in you, our Lord and our God. As we bring our worship, receive it. And as we pray as one, we share in the words that Jesus gave us to say, saying together, Our Father in heaven, you are holy. May your will be done here on earth. May your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And give us today the food we need. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Strengthen us against all temptation. And deliver us from the time of trial. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. To him we come, Jesus Christ the Oh, 
Chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the biggest debt forgiven. You have judged correctly. Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head. But she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who ever even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Amen.
As we carry on our reflection on the topic of forgiveness, we can share four of the most powerful words that ever moved from Jesus' lips. Powerful for us, for each of us in our lives. These words, your sins are forgiven. There are moments in scripture when Jesus uses these words. And some of those around him, some of those who are watching, some of those he's engaging with, get angry. They get upset. There are two accounts where these specific words are used. The one we heard for our reading today, the woman forgiven by Jesus who came weeping at his feet. The other we find a couple of chapters earlier in the book of Luke. Uh, chapter 5 of the paralytic man brought to Jesus by his friends and when they couldn't get through the crowd they climbed up the outside of the building and went onto the roof and dug their way through the roof and lowered him down to Jesus' feet. These words that Jesus uses your sins are forgiven seem to upset people because they they understood something different about the nature of God. They had their view. They had their fundamental rationale challenged. They knew and know that only someone with authority can truly exercise it. Within Jewish tradition, only God can forgive sins. And so the whole sacrifice process was established. You sinned, you made the sacrifice to God, perhaps through the priests, but you made the sacrifice to God and God forgave you. And the priest pronounced that. God alone has authority to forgive. For the offence, the sin, is committed against God. In its simplest form, sin corrupts the image of God in us. That we are all created and imprinted with. And so sin is always against God's work, his handiwork. It may have an effect in the sinner or leading them to do all manner of other things. But the core issue is the denial or diminishing of God in us. The story of the unnamed woman in our reading today. She's simply labelled a sinner. But the implication is that she was a prostitute. And as such cast out from polite religious or even social circles. It's funny though. But in some, indeed many, cultures where her sin is frowned upon, if the population were so upright and so blameless, leading such godly lives, there would never be a demand for her services. 
But that might be a consideration for another day. The woman pushes her way through the crowd listening to Jesus. And she takes from amongst her robes something absolutely precious. Something of great worth. And uses that to express her brokenness before Jesus. This jar of costly perfume might have been her pension fund for later in life. Her investment for the future. And she uses it so generously. On Jesus. She anoints him. She pours it over him. But the teaching, the learning opportunity is for Simon. He looks with absolute disgust, horrified that Jesus is allowing this woman to even touch him, knowing what she was. The washing of feet was an act for the lowest servant of a household. It's a dirty job. No drainage. No, no poo bags. You get all kinds of things on your sandals and onto your feet. She performs this menial task. Not with water from a well or a jar. But with her tears. And she washed off the dust and dirt of the day. Not with a towel. But with her hair. Jesus tells his story about forgiveness, about the cancellation of debts that we heard. Here's the rub. Jesus points out that Simon, this upright Pharisee, he had neglected to provide water for Jesus to wash his feet when he arrived at his home. Nor did he greet him with the kiss of peace or of shalom. This woman this unnamed woman recognizes her brokenness, her need. And she heard those most powerful of words. Your sins are forgiven. In this story, and the one about the paralytic man, there's a sense of desperation, a great need, a desire to get to Jesus. And in that, a hope a hope beyond the present reality. A recognition that he had authority, yes, to heal the man, but also to forgive. And it's the same with this woman. Authority over her sin. The very authority of God. Jesus as God incarnate expresses the God choice to forgive that we considered last week. This should not be seen as it is sometime weakly expressed as a verdict of not guilty. She was guilty. She was guilty as the sin she had committed. Even the words, your sins are forgiven, acknowledges that she was guilty. She was guilty of sin. But the verdict of God is not judgment, but forgiveness. Consider what her sin had done to her. We can picture this woman weeping, kneeling at his feet, whose eyes had beheld God in human form. Saw her. God saw her. Saw her in her sin. Saw her brokenness. Saw the corruption of the image of the Creator in her. She wept. And I wonder if, too, inside, Christ wept. But her tears, tears of repentance, not knowing what Jesus' response would be. He could have kicked her away. He could have spat on her. He could have declaimed her in front of everyone. But 
what does he see? A child of God. A child of God. Who recognized their sin. And has turned back. To God. It's called repentance in old language. Penitent tears. Wash the dirt of the day from his feet. Little did she know that her tears were washing her heart and soul clean from the dirt of her life choices or lack of choices. In my mind's eye, this woman was keeping her head down, knowing the company she was in with the Pharisees all around her, the threat that they posed. And perhaps she felt a hand on her head, perhaps coming down under her chin, Lifting her gaze from his feet to his own eyes. Your sins are forgiven. Your faith has saved you. Go in shalom. The shalom peace of God. The wholeness, the completeness, the restored, active impassioned and compassionate blessing of God the very love of God there are times I wish I had a heart like this woman one that truly knows the sinfulness of my own nature that would take me to my knees yet if truth be told there are times when I feel more like Simon Judgmental, condemnatory, missing the point. And missing it totally. Trapped in a faith of rules and prescriptions. Restrictions and limitations. Forgetting the power of cancelled sin. Forgiveness breaks the chain of the past. It turns our gaze from past to future. Because suddenly we have one. It brings hope. Possibility. Forgiveness is powerful. We cling to past mistakes. Old wounds. Either self-inflicted or caused by others. It can make you cynical. Sour. Bitter than sneering. Whether at others or at society. Why? Because something inside is broken. The image of God in us is broken. And needs restored. Your sins are forgiven. The restoration of a child of God. The church in Scotland has a caricature image of the Doer Presbyterians. More interested in the flames of hell than the glory of heaven. You know what I mean. The old Noxian image of turn or burn. But was it fear that brought this woman to the feet of Jesus? Or hope? A hope to change. A hope of something other than her limited existence. A hope for grace. Perhaps as we have focused more on the loving nature of God in recent times and over recent generations, we have diminished the effect and consequence of sin. Perhaps the pendulum has swung too far the other way. Every sin shatters the image of God in us and continually needs us to be remade through grace. I remember first coming to faith and seeking or seeing perhaps the, the scale of my sinfulness. And over years have cooperated, I think, with God in my own changing. And so many of the obvious sins are past. They're gone. They don't have a hold on my life. They've been broken by God. And yet it seems that with every broken chain we discover a new one. So many still seem to remain Many would regard what I see as my sins as, as inconsequential. But in truth, the deep mystery 
is the closer we get to God, the more the Christ light in us shines, the more we see every mark, every spot and stain, no matter how small. Soft lighting makes us all look good, even me perhaps. Harsh, bright, studio lighting shows up every wrinkle and blemish. So it is with our walk with God. I know that we say that Jesus' sacrifice was a once and for all event. But our repentance of our sin and transformation through grace is an ever ongoing thing. A continual movement towards God. Leaving the past behind. Moving from darkness to light. From shadow to sunshine. Are we like the woman, the penitent? Or or is it more truthful that we are more like Simon? Simon had traded grace for rules and self-righteousness for forgiveness. Traded counterfeit life for real life in God. But let's not get too downhearted. God waits patiently for our return to his feet. And we will hear again those words. Your sins are forgiven. When you pray, do you hear the echo of these words in your life? No? Well then wait. Listen. Long for that whisper of the Spirit. Communicating that liberating truth into your heart into your very soul, into your life. You are forgiven. The old is past and done and gone. You're newly made, fresh each day. Consider what part of your life or faith disappoints you that seems to be a burden or a duty or a weight from the past. What sin seems to beset you time and time again as if it's lying in wait to trip you up in tears of repentance. Wash the feet of Jesus. Get them out. Get them over. Give them to God. Then you will know that your faith in Christ has saved you. You will know his peace And those four powerful words resonating in your very being. Your sins are forgiven. (coughs) Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to you and see the beauty of the earth you have created. At this time, the colours are vibrant and lift our hearts. Through you, we can see these miracles as seasons change. King of kings, Lord of lords, thank you that you hear and answer our prayers. You have said that when we pray, if we're holding anything against anyone, we should forgive them so that you will forgive our sins and hear our prayer. Lord, forgive us for our sins and help us to forgive those who have sinned against us. Make us aware of any lack of forgiveness that is in our hearts and give us the strength we need to forgive. Increase our faith that we may forgive others freely in the same way you have forgiven us. Father, your Son died on the cross so that we may come to you and ask forgiveness, having rebelled and done wrong. Your love for us is greater than our rebellion. Forgive us, Lord, and guide our words, thoughts and deeds today that we may live 
in a way that glorifies you. God, make a fresh start in us. Forgiving God, we bring to you the trials we're encountering each day. We feel frustrated with the way things are and are unable to do anything about it. Father, enable each and every one of us to lean on you, to see how we should live our lives today and tomorrow and beyond. Lord, we pray for those in our community that we may lovingly be there to help in the hours of need, that we may know what to say to people as we meet them on the street or at their front doors or in their garden. Life seems restrictive, but leaning on you helps us to bear the burden. Father, we thank of the fam think of the families in our village and elsewhere and how their lives have changed so much over the last months. Give them love, peace and understanding as we get close to the half-term holidays, that they may be able to enjoy the time. Give those who are having to juggle work and childcare during their holidays an answer to their juggling, so that all the balls are not landing on the floor. Give all rest and time just to be closer to you when on holiday, whether at home or away. Give safe travel to all in their daily lives or holiday trips. Lord, let us remember those who are alone or unwell, that they may find a sense of peace at this time and that they are remembered through a phone call, a video call, or someone just knocking on the door and saying hello. Lord, we ask that you are with us throughout this coming week. Lord, we sometimes just need a hug. Your forgiveness embraces us with your love and acceptance and reminding us that we are yours. We ask these prayers in your name. Amen. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let his praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Saviour Standing, standing on the promises 
grace, mercy, peace, and the loving forgiveness of God enfold you and strengthen you each and every day, now and always. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>